to this week's episode of Edge of the Box. On the sofa we have... Yinka. We have... IK. And our special guest has come back, we've got... Mike. Okay, so, <laughs> this week's topic for our debate is quite interesting and I look forward to it as well. Does the FA, well, should the FA make it a requirement for all coaches to have an FA licence to coach in non-league? All managers. All managers. Yeah. So let's start with let's start with manager himself. The idea behind it is right. It's you've got to have people trying to attain certain standards because otherwise you can't monitor people's abilities and people's levels. Having said that, as someone who's been on the courses or been on a couple of courses, they seem to develop your coaching style. But a lot of the things what are done on the courses are more aimed at coaching children. With the younger players, their, their mentality is changing a lot to sort of what some people would say old school mentality is. Then you need to understand obviously different ways of coaching, different coaching styles. If you relate it to non-league, um, Essex senior, you know, them around them sort of levels. But for me, I've seen quite a lot of coaches who put on sessions which, are more, as I said, not fast enough, not intense enough for for non-league for, for a non-league level. And um, there's no tactical side to it. Mm. So people think that they're going in and they're they're knowledgeable about what they're watching or what they're seeing and really their, their experience or their teaching hasn't shown that and I haven't done a UA for B but I've been told that that's when it, they start to touch more on that kind of um, on that kind of stuff and obviously a UA for A I guess they do it as well but certainly um, level one and level two yeah. is, is very basic um, it does make you look at yourself Mm-hmm. And think, okay, could I could I coach slightly different? As many people say good things about me, there's probably people who'd say bad things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes you look at yourself and think, oh, I could have handled that differently. I had a situation the other day where we was at Holbridge and um, we we we, uh, we set up a thing where they have the players in a circle just feeding the balls. The players go in and get touches, touch a ball back, go and find another ball. And there's an ex-West Ham player at the moment, old, which is called Bertie Brayley. I said, can we have the five subs holding the balls? And then the players, and the starting 11, you, you get in and mm. do the touches. And Bertie went to me like laughing, and went, oh, he said, that's nice. <laughs> and as he said it, I thought, you know, he, he just made me think. And then when, when it kind of finished, I went, I went to him and I said, what do you think I could have said there to make that better? And he said, Maybe something like uh, non-starters, mm, mm. just just like a different word. And the courses that I went on for level one, level two, that is the kind of stuff mm. that they are trying to trying teach. to make you think about, yeah. trying to teach exactly. different. But that kind of stuff will help you keep your group together as a manager, mm. help you keep your squad together. But if you're in a 50-50 game with another team, it's your tactical bit that will... Yeah, makes you know, yeah, make you it. Be the, yeah. the reason why I think is it should they should make it requirements because, like Mike um, said, when he used certain words, it, it, what they teach them of the course nowadays anyway, and if you have a good tutor, sorry to say, I don't mean to expose anything but I'm gonna be real some you might have bad tutors and they just let you watch slides and that's it and then tick you off but I have a good tutor thank god that you know they're gonna proper teach me to the T so if you don't have a if you don't don't go through the courses as you go into non-league what you're doing is in damaging players confidence ruining people's career you know because players come in having problems from outside of football coming to join and express themselves and then you as a coach are not understanding that I've heard coaches in the middle of the game when a player makes a mistake he told him to do press ups wow coach look uh, it's a game mm. get down and do give a press up I mean that's just I had some managers I've had some managers that's not of course that's just yeah, yeah, no no no, 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 no. Uh, but the thing is I'm what, sorry to no, say no, listen, 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 let me finish let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Wow. The guy has not done his course because they would have taught him that that these things you have to watch out. Yeah, but you're not listening to the course. No, you have done a course and still making. No, I've never done a course and I will never tell a player. That's why. That's why you. That's why you bent someone last week saying that you're not good enough for not for not um, being the guy. I don't mean joking. <laughs> <laughs> But this is, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, are you, why are you 
try to, why are you trying to go one-on-one with me? <laughs> Uh, no, listen to what I'm saying. Because on the course, they teach you to avoid these sort of things. To 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 watch out to to make sure you you see that players are very important. Don't mm-hmm. don't dent players' confidence by the way you carry yourself as a coach. That's what is mainly teaching us your own style. When I'm there, it's like most of these things. They said before we start, we're going to give you a lot of stuff, but take stuff that's related to you and your club. Mm. Don't take children's stuff that we're telling you and then go and put it in your club because you'll fail. It's not that. But they're trying to say, okay, we'll relate it to your club. Obviously, it's a three-point game. So but you do you know the only thing? You see, when you're a coach, mm-hmm. you can always be the good guy. You're never the bad guy because you don't pick the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 you don't make the substitute. You don't, you don't, you don't sign and release players. All you've got to do, mm-hmm. all the coaches got to do is put on a good session that the players feel like they've mm. worked and active, maybe they've learned a little bit if, they, if it's a good coach. Mm. And then they go away with a, with, um, with a, a manager. So it's an interesting thing because right now there's a group of managers who are younger and their attitude is a little bit like, I'm friends with the players. Yeah. So because I'm their friend, I can relate to them a little bit more and get in that it's personal sort of thing. So, so then, let me finish, guys. They're trying to also tell us, look, there's stuff that coaches have done in the past, rubbish called, even the coaches that have UEFA, UEFA A, UEFA Pro, whatever. When the player's not getting it right, they say, okay, go and do some runs. That's what they're trying to get us to stop doing because like, it doesn't make sense. Because it's not, this is, we have to remember. It's not about punishment. It's not about pun- punishment. Yeah. Coaches used to punish. Managers just say, okay, we lost on Saturday, let's make them go for a run. Yeah. No, let's, I had a manager, for example, I was, this is my, I had, that was my first, uh, first team uh, appearance in the, in the Spartan League. I was running around, running around, trying to work hard because he said, I need to work hard, you know, if I want to stay and all that. So I was running around, running around. He goes to someone, oh, you're doing well, you're shutting down the players well and everything like that. I was also doing the same, but I wasn't doing it right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I didn't know how to. He was like, you're doing nothing. I don't know what you're doing there. Mm-hmm. Well, I did. I don't know. I'm new to the game. Like, teach, coach me. Tell me how to do it. Tell me how to close down from this angle and not from this angle. Not to run straight at them and such. So, has this manager been on a course? Do you know? If no, you don't. You don't no. Know if so, my point to you now is sorry to cut you. My point to you now is yeah, he actually comes out of individual. Mm. There'll be players. There'll be managers that have been on the course and they'll still do the same thing. That's no, what I'm, I'm not thinking as well. They'll still do the same thing. Okay, no problem. But the more coaches that go on the course, it fills up, it, it reduces the amount of coaches that just coach in Can and I out. get one point across though? Mm. Okay, there's a, there's a myth, yeah? Mm. The myth is, is that if you're older, you're old school. Oh yeah, I've heard that, yeah. It's complete rubbish. I'm 46, I'm still looking at YouTube and all kinds of other mm. stuff, learning all the time. Mm. Yeah. That's, however, that's good. However old you are, you're not gonna look back. But what happens is, I'll give you something, what? I'll give you an idea of something that I, I do at training, I haven't done it yet at Southend Manor, but I've done it at Clapton and I've done it at Barkingside that I've done that a player could look at negatively. We could be going for a training session and we get to the game situation. We are 15 minutes into a game situation and they know that they're doing it for half an hour maybe. Mm. Blow the whistle, stop. Everyone on the line, shuttle runs. In the middle of a game situation, stop, shuttle runs. And I'm sure players have looked at me and gone, mm-hmm. It's crazy. Just let us play, it's crazy. Yeah. Old mm-hmm. school, whatever, mm-hmm. yeah? What am I really doing getting them to do shuttle runs for? Mm-hmm. Establish respect for when the manager gives mm-hmm. the instruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Discipline in terms of team shape. Mm-hmm. If I tell the player what I want from in the game, who's going to come yeah. back at me yeah. and who's not going to? Um, if a refereeing decision goes against us, mm-hmm. are you going to moan at the ref or are you just going to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you see what happens is, is when you do that, half of the players straight on the line ready to go, mm-hmm. the other half, yeah. oh, uh, so, you so, 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 so sometimes when you do things, you can't always go put your arm around the player and no, go look, yeah, no, no, you no, know, no. obviously we know players mm-hmm. if they're more, if they're more Mm. You're going to give them confidence if you're like that. Mm. What, what are you going to do if they're not doing the business? Like no, but that's diff- yeah. like I said, that's different. For a three-point game, you don't do, you don't, you don't so do that. It's, you so have to look after your job first. But what I'm saying is, the way you're going about with it, fine, do what you need to do, but don't, don't be too like, like for example, you said you made a mistake saying to a player you're not good enough. 
Things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Things that are, oh, you can't go higher. What's going on going higher? So, so yeah. relating back to the question, yeah. 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 Is it, actually answer, it seems like, are you leaning more to the yes issue? Yes, because it built, it's not going to change everything, but it filters out those yeah. who are those who are just going into the game and trying to ruin it. Whereas you're, you're more on the what, no side, do you think? Because I wasn't saying no, but I just don't believe it's an individual because there will be individuals, just like going to school sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There'll be individuals that will go and do something, they'll learn it, yeah. they'll yeah. listen to the right thing to do, but they'll still oh, do the wrong oh, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like that's those, it's like those, those about, it's like those of us. This is the other side yeah. of the problem. This is the other side of the problem. I put an advert on Twitter uh, about three or four days ago for a first team coach mm. at Southend Manor. No experience required. Oh yeah, um, I saw that, yeah. All I want is the, your, uh, you, that you are willing to muck in. Okay. And whatever needs doing, because that is what non-league is about. Mm. One, mm. Minute, mm. one minute, I'm one minute, I'm that. One minute, <laughs> one minute <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something now, which is quite funny. One minute you might be asked to do the water bottles. Mm. One minute you might be asked to do the kit. Mm. One minute you might, you know, there's loads of things you could have. And if then you, we get to the stage where we've covered all that, mm. um, then we get into the football. So we, but the interesting thing yeah. about this now, I did this advert under my own name. So maybe I haven't got like loads and mm. loads of followers. Yeah. Uh, but I did at South End Manor. So I think mm. it goes onto their page as yeah. well. I'm not sure. How many responses do you think I got? First team coach, South End Manor, no experience required, just the ability to muck in. Mm -hmm. And I put on it, I think I will, you will have the opportunity to coach and develop your own sessions mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, that's many, right. how many replies do you think I got? A lot of them. Zero. Wow. Really? Not one message. I said that one too. E not one email, not one phone What do you call. think that is then? What's that, what's that? I don't know whether it was because my specific... I think I've got a few followers, like, not like... <laughs> you don't think a lot I don't know how many... No, no, I saw, like, even I spread it. I, I, I pull it up. I'm looking around for you. I so, haven't had... Now, you've got all the, And I even streaked your, your FA instructor. Yeah, yeah. I messaged him and I said, is there any people on your course That's you can people, recommend? Yeah. And he said, he'll have a think about it. And I'm like, listen... I, I don't care about those, mm -hmm. in, in that sense. I'll, I'll run an exercise, me and you will, because I even said, like, a guy came in Saturday and I said, what we'll do, I said, when we run a training session, me and you will sit in front of the board to start with and we'll plan out the session. What we want to do, how we want it to run through, warm up, uh, technical, social, all, all of so, all so the sounds of it, you would have a problem with the FA making it compulsory then, to have an FA license, because you put an advert out. It's that more, not, I've, I've been, what, why I wasn't a manager, I, I got interviewed for the job at uh, Fisher, mm -hmm. what, which Alan Fain got. Um, I've applied for a couple of other jobs, uh, which I didn't get an interview for, at a lower level than what I'm currently at. Yeah. And um, the chairman say, their, their question is, have you got any badges? Mm -hmm. So, you have to have them now because I think the chairman are trying to fit in with the FA and they're trying to ask for it. The only thing what I would say is is that my level of experience, what I've been through, if you've got a level one guy who's had no experience, mm -hmm. if he goes for the job or level two and I yeah. haven't quite got my level yeah. two yet, if he's got a level two, does that make this? Yeah. That be no, no, but that's, yeah, that's me, not what it Me personally, I see both sides because I would relate it to, let's look at in the education yeah, yeah. Um, industry, mm -hmm. for example. So, would you have a math degree? teacher who hasn't yeah. got a degree in maths? Yeah. Would you have an English teacher who hasn't got a degree or a teaching qualification? Yeah. Even though you can. But, yeah. even though, but the thing is, that on the, on the flip side, I would say the degree doesn't necessarily mean you're the better teacher. Yeah, it doesn't because mean that. Because I, I it, I, 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 I do, it makes you qualified. Yeah. But it's. But we're talking about professionalism here, yeah, in non-league. We want to see non-league get more professional. Yeah, yeah. So if we want it to be more professional, mm -hmm. it's, it's important that qualifications come into yeah, it, in my opinion. Because in all these other professional environments, like yeah. teaching, we said. Yeah, they've got the degree. The, 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 the degree, the qualifications. Mm -hmm. And they might be the best. And then they'll like come out to the students. Now, yeah? I've, I've moved to Portsmouth now. Okay, so if you, if you go into the programme coaching kids, you've got to have the badges. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an actual essential requirement. It's essential. One of the big concerns for me, and, and it will be for people ab above me, is, is that players I'm dealing with in my dressing room right now are 17, 18, 19 and 20. Mm. How do I relate to those players? Mm. 
I go in there and I listen to music and it just, I, I laugh. I'm listening to them talking sure. about all kinds of sexual music <laughs> and whatever else. What's and I'm, like, I'm in there yesterday and I'm like, what is on the, what is, what, what, what yeah. is this? And, some, and somehow, somehow I've got to try and relate to these guys yeah. and communicate to these guys yeah. without them thinking like I'm totally out of date. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> do, do, you get what, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's the tough side of stuff. But what I also know is, and I'm going to go against some people's views here, people who think that being a manager, you can be a player's friend and that's how you're going to manage, just by being friends with a kind of You are going to come unstuck. Yeah. You know, because whether you're the friend or not, as soon as that person stops being played, mm, yeah, it's true. then you can't pat someone on the back and go, oh, Ike, you're, you're my mate, please accept that I've put you on the mm. bench and I'll give you a reason. Players want to play. Yeah, it's hard. So, yeah. but I think pro game, badges definitely. Bet Victor Prem, National South, m minimum UA for B. Yeah. Minimum UA for B, probably UA for A. Bostic North, I would say. Nah, I don't. No, level two. Level two. Level, like level, level, two. level two UA for B, Bostic North, Essex Senior, Contacts. Mm -hmm. It's a level of level one. I, I, it's Essex Senior, who do you know to get you in the door? Yeah. You need the opportunity. You need the opportunity to show uh, that, that you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, I, I was captain reserve team manager. Mm. The manager left, uh, Vince saw something in me at the time, gave me a chance. No badges, gave me a chance. And then since then I've just tried to, mm -hmm. to, to work with it. You need somebody to give, you the, to give you the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something, there's people like me out there who, I've, Andre Thomas, who was at Barking, I brought Andre in as a coach at Clapton, uh, sorry, assistant manager. He'd been doing kids football with Kiers, Kiernan, uh, um, a, a local team. Brought him in and he, he will say himself, when he first came in, he wasn't ready to coach normally, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or like Essex Senior. And then eventually, you know, he's moved on, moved to Barking, and then he'll probably move on again from now. Um, but he needed the opportunity. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, he, if they bring it in this, if they did bring it this in, it would actually block the progression of some highly potential, like no. co some coaches with high potential. Yeah, yeah but if that right. manager wants to really manage, if he really if wants to be the coach, then he'll get the manager. It's not a problem. But sometimes it's it's not as Straightforward because let's say the time you got your um, your opportunity badges, at Clapton, yeah. the badges weren't so much a prominent thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so if, right. if it was at that time, it might have just for you to get your, said, for yeah. you to end up going for you to get yeah. your badges, we'd have been Do you know what my key thing when I look for a coach is now? Because yeah. I'll tell you what my key thing is. Can I trust that person? Yeah. Is that person loyal? Is that person the kind of character who's going to try and get the players against me and in their favour because they want my job? Yeah, that's right. And that is that is that is that is the pure reality. Most assistant managers in the uh, in uh, Essex Senior League or these leagues, unless unless you are really tight with them, unless you're like family, they want to be a manager. Mm. So, so, you out. so 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 they don't help you get players. Yeah, they miss lots of sessions, um, but they get to say, I'm the assistant manager. So at South End Manor now, no assistant manager, I'm not having one, I'm just going to have coaches. Mm -hmm. See, with me, when I was managing with Leighton Athletic, yeah, yeah. my assistant manager was my cousin. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I'm on the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. My sister manager was my cousin. Literally. You know, my cousin's been there for me for life. I, I, I'm not. I'm not getting to know the person just today or yeah. for weeks or anything like that. Some by, 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 the, by the way, it doesn't mean that that the like I had it at Barking side. Okay, I had two, two or three assistant managers who who basically did things that they shouldn't have done. Then managers are still in the game. One is managing in the Essex Senior League now. One is managing below the S one league below the S16. They are both good guys. Mm. Or like or like two or three of them. They are good guys. Mm. They know their football. One of them, the team is very successful right now. Mm. Yeah. But they should never have ever got a position 
as an assistant manager with me if their intentions was to be a manager was just to take my role yeah and and the problem and the problem with managers is is like when I went to Durham to help Darren at Holbridge and to help Eon at FC Romania everything I did was to try and help them guys Mm. progress and get better so badges are important but it's like you, unless that manager feels like he can trust you, mm. um, me, I can tell you, I've given a lot of people over the years, especially from the East London area, uh, opportunities to guys what some people wouldn't have been given an opportunity somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. There's some managers who, who won't touch somebody they don't know mm-hmm. because they have this trust issue and yeah yeah, you know, yeah. I've had a guy and I, I still speak to the guy now funnily enough um, and he has a dig at me now and again on Twitter but do you know what he's a really good coach but he, he went to my chairman behind my back and spoke to the chairman telling him to give him the job mm-hmm. and the chairman came back to me and told me well so, <laughs> so you know he could be a UA for you A for B, you yeah, A for change B. Your character, that's what, my point. Whatever is. And, and by the way, when you say change character, the guy's a nice guy. He's a nice character, but he wanted to manage. So yeah, he should never have come in as my assistant on my Yeah, coach. you don't. You, and that's another thing. We don't want these sort of managers. I don't personally want managers like that around in the game because for me, that's, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. You don't go into the game and st- be a system of the whole thing you know, Did they teach you this on the course? Not they don't teach you this, but we're talking about mainly for players. Players are the most important thing in football. Yeah, yeah. No one is more important than players. So for co- any coaches, anyhow, just to come in and ruin players' confidence, and even from the kids uh, above, it's rock. We don't want these coaches around. So I just want them to go through that. I will say now, I'm a lot softer than when I started. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll, tell you that, I'll tell you that now. When I was at Clapton, I was tough. But I thought I'm in an area of East London where the sort of boys I was dealing with, I have to be tough. Otherwise, mm-hmm. and Vince, the chairman of Clapton, he used to say to me, Mike, he said, you're an Essex boy. He said, you're in Forest Gate now, managing this. He said, you need to you be need tough. To be tough, tough, tough boys. <laughs> yeah, but, but were your tough, is, tough, tough, of course, help. Did that, it did of course, help, help you? It help helped, it, like yeah, it did. Like now, for example, at, uh, at Southend Manor, I send players little messages. Well done yesterday. Mm, yeah, mm. I, thought, I thought you did well. So you reckon the course of course, of course, so, so in, that, in that kind of thing, yeah. mm. in that kind of thing, it's helped because. It, and then I'm questioning before I'm saying something. Mm. Why? Is how's this going to come across? Yeah. It's still, by the way, now again, I said you still get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. But, but, but before I was a, I was, I was, I was tough. Even back down to football, mm. your. It, as a coach, when you learn through the courses, you will learn why you're doing it. So, for example, Mike can't put a session of maybe, for example, he wants to play a rondo. Why is he going to do a rondo if he's not if his system is not to play <laughs> tiki taki football? <laughs> if you get what I mean, purpose there's a purpose. So they want us to understand and to think why do we need to do something? Why do we need to say? Yeah. But you know, mm-hmm. on the course, because mm-hmm. I went on the level two course the same one as you, yeah. and they said they don't see the value of the rondo. They don't, but that's right, their opinion. Can I but, but you know what? Barcelona, Rondo, Man City, right? all these clubs are Rondo. But you know what now with me in the warm-up? Mm-hmm. I used to be really, really structured in the warm-up, right? In terms of this happens at this time, this mm-hmm. happens at this time. And I, used to, and I used to do loads of keep ball. There's right? nothing now, there. I send the players out. They start with the Rondo. We did the same thing at Holbridge. They start with the Rondo. I let them go almost up to 25 past at the latest doing the rondo of let's say 25 past mm-hmm. two. You've come out for a warm up at say 205. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. Because in that rondo, there is so much team spirit mm-hmm. that yeah. is built Being when someone. Up. When yeah. someone puts the ball through someone's legs, mm. yeah. they're all laughing and joking. Also with a run though, different ways of receiving the ball yeah. from a technical aspect. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, yeah. And then also then it, the warm-up is more relaxed. Mm. Yeah. Keep ball, we do keep ball for two minutes. Mm. Yeah, years ago it was like structure, structure, keep ball, five minutes, mm. six minutes. Yeah. And just that, them little things of the rondo and encouraging that team thing and which is what the course is all about, mm. 
Um, I think he's good. The only thing what I would say is there's one thing that st stops nothing, uh, which 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 sort of throws everything out the window. If you're at the bottom of the league, you've got problems no matter what coach you are. <laughs> yeah. And if you're in the middle of the table and it's going okay and you're at the top, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. there's not, yeah. If you're managing down the bottom, That's I right. don't care how yeah. much you're. I would say to any manager, if you're at the bottom and you're struggling. Don't try and coach the players you've got. Move the players on and get new players in mm -hmm. who have got a winning mentality yes, and a fresh mindset. So recruitment, especially at senior level, is more important, important than the coaching. Yeah, but you know that when you became a manager at Leighton Athletic, yeah. they were losing games. Yeah. You brought in Eli, mm. uh, yourself, a couple of other lads, all of a sudden started winning games. You see, when I got given the opportunity, mm. it was more on who can you bring rather than what qualifications you've got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. what it helped. Yeah. Honestly, it helped. Like, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm the best coach. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even yeah, a coach, yeah, yeah. generally. I wasn't even pursuing this opportunity. Yeah. It came about because the job I was initially doing was as recruitment. Mm -hmm. And the players were doing good with the coach at the time. So, when the chairman wanted to fill the role when it became vacant, for him, it was more, you know what, I've done UA for A, I've had UA for B coaches, I've had level two, blah, 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 yeah, and, yeah. and they were still at the bottom. Yeah. But things changed just because of the recruitment of the players. Mm. And obviously, when he noticed that it was my job um, that to recruit the players, and it was me that was getting the players in, blah, 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 then he offered me the manager's job. So basically, I think it depends on the level. Like you said, Essex Senior is more the contact, I think. Yeah, I agree yeah, with you. yeah, yeah. When the higher up you get, now it gets a bit more technical now, and the, yeah, you know, yeah. coaching is more important, and there's a lot more things than just, you know, Essex Senior is a bit messy, so it's more the yeah. recruitment. Higher up you go, the more you need to know now that you'll learn from these courses that you're talking about yeah. now. The man management side of it, tactical mm -hmm. side. Um, I'll be honest. When we had a game against you, yeah, we, um, the FA Cup. So the first game was a. Uh, when you sat game. behind the ball at half time. Uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> we yeah. just sat behind the ball. Yeah. So and then you won three. And then we, we won three. You know, yeah, the yeah. second half. Sorry yeah. to remind you. Yeah, no, but um, <laughs> but the first yeah. the first game yeah. finished nil nil. Yeah. We had a replay. Yeah. Um, in in between both games, we had about three four days. Yeah. So everything that I was preparing for that game didn't actually come from the any course. It was me just spending time at home, yeah, no, looking at YouTube, yeah. coming up with a game plan. Uh, to yeah. be honest, I basically copied and pasted Diego yeah. Simeone. Yeah, yeah. No, I bet on but, but, as well. Yeah. But the that's thing is, the thing is, the course doesn't always teach um, the manager or the coach to do certain things. Sometimes you still need to do things mm -hmm. yourself yeah, yeah. Out, outside yeah. of the course. Yeah. But, I See, but even mean, in that game, helps. even in that game there, sort of just quickly talking that that game. So the, the first 45 we dominated. Yeah. If we'd have had the forwards up front to put the ball in the back of the net, of the right quality, game. the game would have been out of sight. Yeah. As it was, sat behind the ball, bits on the counter, yeah. scored a couple of goals. Yeah. And that, at Essex Senior League level, if you haven't got the players, especially in them forward positions, yeah, we've got problems. Yeah. So if we were to say a general yeah. yes or no, uh, should to the be fair, make I would just stick to what you guys said. So. Depends on the levels you're going at. Yeah. So they can't make it generally um, um, a requirement for every single level. So they've got to just set aside what levels you need for if you're I think, I think if the FA brought it, they'd probably bring it in for all clubs at all levels playing in the FA Cup, maybe. I think that's how yeah, they would, yeah, they would yeah, um, categorise it. Yeah. So you have to include every yeah, yes or no. Yeah. Would, yeah. The, would you agree the FA? Saying um, make it compulsory for so that includes down all the way down to step six, five. I, or six. I would I would agree with it, but I would say that's not necessarily going to get you a job. So now you was a bit on the fifty fifty. Yeah, I'll go. I was about the fifty fifty at the start, but now I'm the, uh, yes as well. Yes. So, so you know, I guess we'll, yeah, so. But let us know what you think as you well on Twitter. Agree with us? Are you, you agree? yes or are you not? And this week's game is Worthing against Leverhead. It's a big victory for Premier Thanks to your instant replay, by the way, for providing us the footage to this game. And let's get started. Premier mid-table Worthing hosted a Leatherhead side with only two points to their name so far this season, in what may end up being the best game of the season so far. The host took the lead on only three minutes with Oliver Pierce's close range header.
Leatherhead's response came via Travis Gregory, racing to meet the low cross and tap home the equaliser. The away side's pressing would see them take the lead not long after, stealing the ball at the back and setting up Charlie Kester Cook to sweep the visitors in front. Leatherhead would have the chance to extend their lead when they were awarded a penalty, but Rocco Reese guessed the right way to keep out a poorly struck spot kick. They would of course be made to ruin the missed opportunity, as on the stroke of half time, Reese Miles Meekham's pounced on the loose ball in the box to level the scores going in at the break. A little over five minutes after the restart, Miles Meekums was once again Johnny on the spot, the first to react following Zaku Oala's save. After a couple of good chances, including Meekham's nearly picking up his hat-trick, Leatherhead drew level again as Tommy Ward rose highest to head home the free kick. <laughs> Only two minutes later, Wood was on hand again to add Leatherhead into the lead. Worthing barely had time to recover before the ball once again was down their throats. Ibrahim Alatade taking on the long ball, beating a defender and firing brilliantly into the far corner to give Leatherhead their third goal in the space of five minutes. The two goal cushion itself would last all of three minutes. Under virtually no pressure, Will Salmon was adjudged to have handled the ball, giving Lloyd Dawes the chance to fire into the bottom corner and bring Worthing back within one. <laughs> Worthing piled on pressure in the game's final stages producing chance after chance after chance before finally Mason Dalty's scuffed effort dribbled over the line to level the scores for good. A truly ridiculous game of football that leaves Worthing in mid-table and Leatherhead second from bottom after winning only their third point of the season, perhaps both encouraged and disturbed in equal measure by the final score against Worthing. Said they have a good uh, youth system. Yeah, they're, they're, they're known for bringing uh, lots of young players through, moving them on to pro clubs. Okay. Oof. That right wing was rapid, straight away. <laughs> that fullback scrambling. What's it <laughs> Quick crossing, the striker had to just tap in, you don't have to do much oh, work. Tappings are the best one. <laughs> Love tappings. I mean, I, 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 I mean, they, they left the left back to go one on one like that. I'm, I'm sorry, that's. 
ridiculous there. Look at this big gap between the left back and centre back, or left back and and centre mid. It's too much. So you're saying the left centre back should have been a bit closer, at, at least a bit closer, and so, or someone to cover around because yeah. you can't have that so, so much space like that to See, that's, do one on one. That's a, that's difference in levels. Centre halves at higher levels mm. always hold the near post. They don't come out because the managers, what they will say is, he expects his fullback to get that ball. to be able to deal with the one v one, and then and then the centre the centre half starting point will be the near post, hoping that if he beats him, a midfield player will come and come in, mm. or the centre half will block the cross at the near post. Mm. Well, you don't see centre halves. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying to drift so much cross. cross. It hold the near post. There has to be half and half, but in my opinion, or centre mid should be in around. Yeah, a midfield because, player could have could have been dropping in because this the positioning of the players will make a difference of his decision of the player's decision on how he's going to cross that ball. Yeah. Because now that he has that space, he can just give us. See what happens is you go up as well. There's a there's a saying the Cowleys do it a lot. It's field of frame, mm. field of frame. So where the goal is. Um, they're like when crosses come in, let the cross come in, but we'll fill the frame. Okay. Or do your best to stop the cross, mm -hmm. but we'll fill the frame of the goal with in. bodies. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But or, in there, it hasn't worked for them, has it? Because no. he's, he's put the ball across the goal and he's headed it in. But credit to the right winger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, easy yeah, yeah. skill. Yeah, yeah. Right on the line. It's a good skill. skill. It's it's good, good ball control there. To be fair, that yeah, set back trying to come across. As yeah, quick as I'm, saying, I'm saying he's yeah, starting too late. Just, just a little yeah. bit, just a little bit, so yeah. he can he can change the way that mm. that that wings are across that wall. I don't think the guys defended that well either on, on that on the left back. Probably got a bit too sort of close to him. Yeah. Mm. Good goal. We're going to fly in the moment. You do get a lot more one v one, so as a heart, as the a high up without yeah, they expect him to deal with it. I think defensively. So strengthened there, wow. Yeah, strong. Yeah. Another tap in, another finish with the finish. Yeah. And another winger has worked his way there. It's more or less the same goal as the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. school, isn't it? Actually, it's come across to win a really nice ball in the danger area. I see, did you see that there now? He stepped out from the left side centre half yeah. and stepped to the six yard box. Yeah. Yeah, now see what happens. Follow that through. Look where he scores the goal. Mm. So you're saying so if, he he held, there, if he held the yeah, post, he would have been there. He clears it. Okay. Because he steps out, he leaves the gap for the midfield man. Mm -hmm. The other centre half and the right back cannot cover the run of the late arriving midfield player, and that's why the centre half on the left side doesn't. But we just yeah, in the centre back's yeah. mind that he's thinking if he just stands, stays in the six yard yeah. area, he's giving him time to keep coming. To keep carrying. It. That's but, 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 from but, time. Yeah, but this is this is the individual decision. That different people will. Or if there's someone different else that should be doing that job. The but ideally, you, you, ideally, you'd want a midfield player tracking in. But this is why I'm saying is like quick centre halves will generally will come out. They're not afraid to come out. Mm. Centre halves are a little bit slower. This situation is different because this was done by mistake. There's no time. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Done by so, mistake, so to be fair, he's, 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 he has to deal with that. You yeah, can't just, blame our strength, you know. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, the He was problem. five yards away from you. It's true. Yeah. So he's yeah. had to get the ball before you and is our strength. So they don't expect him to lose the ball there. But but exactly. that has happened though. I know you said the word ideally and stuff, yeah. but there's certain situations where you just have to now just adapt or take the initiative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. I wouldn't be what the centre back has for. You know what? So quick. I don't expect him to be out. Yeah. Strength, it's poor yeah. from him. Yeah, so what do I do? Yeah. Still stay in the situation where ideally I want to be, or yeah. actually deal with the situation that's presented itself yes. now? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably why he's rushed off. Yeah. And instead of letting him come closer and closer to the goal, but yeah. more time. my thing is we should even talk about that centre back because it wasn't his doing. He's thinking this player's going to do it. Yeah, that's my. So he's trying to get into. So yeah, yeah. So it's, do what it's nothing yeah. to do. With, it, there's yeah. a good goal from uh, Leverhead. Yeah. They worked hard for it. So it's a good run into the box by the forward. Yeah. Uh, but midfield player. Or I would say this is another example of where we are talking early, um, in previous weeks episode where the higher up you go, the more physical you yes, gotta be. Yes, it's yes, an example yes. there, you know. Mm. You got dealt with, you know. Literally, it's crazy. This is another crazy. example of a team trying to play at the back yeah. and costing them. It seems like, and yes, it has cost them. Yeah. Good finish, though. Well, can you pause there for a second, please? So, as a manager, would you like your defenders to play from the back, or are you the type to just launch the ball forward? The way I play out is following Mark Stimson, who's at uh, Hornchurch now. 
I only we only split on one side, mm. and I keep this sec. So one, the right hand side man comes to the right side of the box. The left hand side man stays in the D centrally, and then we come up like that because splitting on both sides with a holding mid coming into the middle, everybody knows you're going to do it. If you turn over that ball in that middle area, the four turns the ball over. There's no way them centre halves will split. They're going to recover in time mm. to do it. And do you know what? I think I, I did some stats actually when I was at Holbridge. I think 95% of kicks in the Bostic North, in the, in the, when it was the Bostic North or whatever, are long. Very, very few teams actually mm. play out. It's diff, um, you know, most keepers are kicking. We played a game to, against Cockfosters where we played wing backs and we played out. We, first of all, we went long, pushed them back a bit, and then we played in front of them. Yesterday, it was a windy day, every single kick, mm -hmm. we went long. So it, it does depend so it on, depends on, depends on what pitch, what type of pitch you want. It's a 3G surface, you can see that Worthing yeah. have, are probably playing to the pitch as well. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. probably going to have to play like that fair, I don't blame them for playing. I'm not a fan of playing from the back. I love, when I was through, I love to watch Man City, I have to watch Barcelona mm -hmm. because yeah. You have to build a confidence in your players, but I always believe as well, you have to play to your strength. So if yeah. you've got centre backs that can't do it, then yeah. it's not there's, there's no point of doing it. Yeah. So if you have the team that can do it, do it. it do, you're always gonna make mistakes. Yeah. That shouldn't stop you from doing it. Yeah. Well, you can look at that way and then remember when Pep Guardiola, his first team, he didn't have the players yet to do it, but he mm -hmm. just kept doing it even though he was losing oh, yeah. games. So Another argument could be you just keep doing it, get the players mm. used to it, and then in, in time, when you get the players mm. that will fill up mm. the, the, the weak areas, yeah. then everyone can do it now. See, so see, that's, see, that's see, the see the clever teams. Mm. If a team sits off you, you're playing front. If a, plea, if a team sets up narrow, you play wide. Mm. If a team pushes, you play behind. Mm -hmm. mm. That, that, that's what should happen. When you become too predictable, then you've got a problem. But what sometimes happens as a manager, you might say to your player, this is how we're going to set up, and you're going to have the option, but I want you to start by kicking the ball to our guy on the left-hand side. Mm. He will take you literally. Mm. So rather than using his own fault and analysing the game, where the wind is, how far the ball's going to carry, how the other team are playing, it'll be, my manager's told me, kick the ball mm. to the left. So every single ball's going kind of to the left. left. You'll go in at half time and you'll go, why, why didn't you use your brain there? They're sitting off as you could have played out. Mm. Oh, you told me to kick to the left. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen at this level, <laughs> but at exceeding league level, it's what happens. Yeah, so let's, let's get on with the rest of the game. It's credit to the keeper as well. <laughs> Good strike, good, good, good strike. Two two now. I mean, they deserve to score in money. It's one of the Zaku Arana save. Good save from the keeper. Unfortunately, no one was there to cover it. Mm. Could he have carried it a really different direction? Or I, like, it, I like that when I see forwards doing oh, it's amazing. Step, step overs in the box and their, and their teammate is on the same yeah same yeah. wavelength. From I never understand that, why defences just don't get goal side of the forwards and why they just run in with them. So you're more man marking them just uh, well, uh, zoning yeah, them. I think you've got to, you've got to That's get, you've goal. Got to get goal side of your man and you've got to phys physically yeah. put, put yourself on him They've physically. Got good balls in to the see here, yeah, look again, another example. They've scored the 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 goal 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 header. You got to say there as well the defence is so deep that the, if they was higher, then the keeper could have come and played that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we barely had time to recover before the ball once again was down their throats. Ibrahim mm -hmm. Alatade taking the ball through, beating a defender and firing brilliantly into the far corner to give Leatherhead their Great goal! goal. Great goal! goal. Wonderful goal! <laughs> you know what? The, the that, that defender tried. Do that. He tried, but. Great score! A strike like that sharp snapshot finish, amazing. That's a great score. It's a great finish. That's poor defending. Two, goal Two of them going for the same ball. Minutes. Under virtually no pressure. Oh, 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 there was no one right next to it. Good finish. That's how you take a pen.
Well, then piled on pressure in the Lev's final stages, producing chance Oof. after chance Keep after chance. Keep going on that. Mason yeah, Lewis's scuffed effort dribbled over the line to never be a keeper. Fortunately, the keeper and defenders let him down. What a game! 5 5. So many goals. Both of these teams are known for bringing through young players. Yeah. And I think it's sort of to get that kind of scoreline shows that's what you get with young, yeah. young players. Mm. Good game, all in. Okay, 10 goals. Okay, next up are the goals of the month for September. The lead wasn't to last long, as Jack Thomas won the ball in midfield, beating multiple defenders before firing into the back of the net to complete a fine solo goal. Their second came a little over five minutes later, courtesy of Connor Tiggy, who, with plenty of space on the edge of the box, picked out a beauty of a strike into the bottom corner. The home side carried on persisting, but were cut out by a very strong Abbey Rangers defence. But they would break through eventually, as Billy Jones's superb long-range shots brought the score level. Making a save at one end, Seven Oaks keeper Ben Bridal Card launched the ball forward, where Connor French's lovely touch set up Ainsley Everett to beat a defender and smartly finished from a tight angle to level the score. Brown's heroics couldn't deny AV their third, however. As Jason Rad found an ocean of space to run into, cutting inside and curling the kill shot into the far corner. A fifth would be added with six minutes left as Nekatrarios Varouakis put the ball into the top left corner with an amazing left footer. Oh my god! <laughs> Worthing barely had time to recover before the ball once again was down their throats. Ibrahim Alatadi taking on the long ball, beating a defender and firing brilliantly into the far corner to give Leatherhead their third goal in the space of five minutes. Okay, so guys, you've seen the goals of the month. What do you think? So start with the Inco. Uh, I'm not careful for not have a goal than that Leatherhead goal. That yeah. was a great strike. I mean, the confidence to even cut it in yeah. and shoot. That, that to me, that's the goal of the month for me. Mike? I'll go for the Leatherhead goal just for the team celebration, I think, after. Great finish, great ball, but the team celebration was great. What do you think? Okay. Hands down, Leatherhead. For me, it was a great goal. Uh, and <laughs> yes, so I guess we're, we're unanimous again. Or should it just be diff say a different one? Just be extra. Uh, to be honest, look, I'd say my runner up is the Wolfram's goal. I like that one, the way you cut in. 
and pick the top corner. But yeah, it is the perfect goal for me as well. So for all of us, we we leave it there. Okay, well done, guys. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Catch us next week, and thanks again to Yinka, to Ike, yes. and to our special guest Mike. Who's been I don't know, here. I don't know who Ike is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that ball.